Puts a smile on his face. I'm sure that that extends each time. Each time I hear that, I'm sure there's a couple tech more tech talk, talks tech in talk, there. Tech talk. Will we get to the stage, Matthew Dickerson? And I can do it in my Bentley. I can open my car without even getting near it. Right? I can sit in my leathered seat in my Bentley with its uh, its uh, walnut dashboard, and I can say start engine, and it starts. We have self-driving cars, don't we? We do at the moment. And, yes. Yep. And we have uh, the ability to go from here to Mars without any pilot in it. Yeah. When will we get to the stage I can sit in front of my computer and say, begin? Well, in certain conditions you can do that now. There are certain ways you can interact with your various devices in your home. You've got um, different companies, uh, Alexa from Amazon, for example, yeah. Google Home, uh, Apple Air, HomePod. I'll get back to Alexa in a minute. Too. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you've got some issues with Alexa while the sound yeah, of it. Yes, yeah. yes. But you've got that ability in certain circumstances. One of the trickiest things, and we think that computers are fantastic, Richard, and, and they're going fantastically fast, but you, you forget sometimes just how clever humans are. And for humans to interact, for you and I to be sitting here talking now, for your tens of thousands of listeners to understand what we're saying, is quite natural for all of us. But to get a computer to understand different accents, different expressions, the yeah. way we all talk, the phrases that we use, to get a computer to understand all those things is incredibly difficult. And the amount of processing power that's needed is huge. And, and so these things we're talking about weren't even possible, say, but 10 years ago. But the Bentley recognises my voice. You've got to train it, though. If, if you don't want me yeah, to jump in yeah. your Bentley and drive it away, then you've got to spend some time training it. And that's the thing. That well, voice recognition works really well when you can spend the time to train it to your voice. Well, actually, you don't say engine start. You say engine start... <clears throat> So it picks up the nuance at the end. Yeah. If somebody just jumps into the car and says engine start and doesn't have that little cough at the end, yep. it doesn't do anything. That's right. And you've trained it. That's you've right. trained your Bentley to understand your voice, understand how you interact. And so that's that's the, the crucial issue here is that anyone jumping in your car, they, they can't do that. And so that's where computers aren't quite there where you and I are at the mm. moment, that we can understand different voices and understand what it means and how we're saying things. Yeah, but I, my car can also stay in its lane without me touching the steering wheel. Yeah, that's That's a cool. computer. Well, that's a computer, but that's a really simple thing for it to do. It's looking for white lines down the side of the road. It's basically taking constant video of those white lines along the side. If you get too close to that, it says, I know, this is too close. I'll give a bit of a shutter on the on the steering wheel and move the person back over. And ditto, I guess, if I get too close to that uh, clapped out uh, car in front of me. Yeah, that's right. But computers are really good with binary, with yes and no. So... I'm driving along. Binary. I've got binary, yep. Right. They, they understand ones and zeros. They understand yeses and nos. When I'm too close to the car in front, it's a simple radar that's bouncing off. This person's 50 metres away, everything's okay. 30 metres away, oh, I now know that's gone into the zone of too close. I'll do something about that. So it's very much a yes and no. But when we talk to a computer, then it's not just a yes and a no. There's a whole bunch of stuff it's got to try and understand, and that's where computers are okay. challenged still. Do you think we'll get to the day where I can walk into my room? I can now clap at my house and the lights will go on. Yep. I can uh, organise my shower to be at the right temperature. Yeah. I don't have to even touch anything. Yeah, yeah. But will I be able to sit in front of my computer one day and whistle a melody and it gives me the answer what it is? Well, if you're good enough at whistling, <laughs> there are apps at the moment now that can listen to music and tell you what it is. And I've actually tried, and I'm not a very good singer, Richard, but I've tried to sing to Shazam and try and work out what the song is that never gets it right. No, right. So again, you and I could whistle a very rough tune and we'd understand what we're trying to do. But to get a computer to do it, because it's got to match exactly. So it's not clever enough to go, oh, Richard's just got a, a slightly flat E there, but I reckon he's trying to whistle whatever it might no. be. But a computer needs exactly the information. So Shazam's easy. It listens for the exact frequencies and matches it to a database. So again, it's just saying, yes, that's correct. No, it's not. Right. End of story. Now, we can turn on a little gadget that looks like, uh, I suppose, a mini transistor on my mantelpiece, and I can ask it a question. It'll convert meters into feet, uh, Fahrenheit into Celsius. It knows those answers. How does that work? It's actually sitting away from... So there's nothing in that apart from a link. So when you talk about some of those home devices... All it's doing is giving you a link to a database way off in the cloud somewhere. And essentially, when you ask it something, it sends that information away, goes through and processes it, and comes back. What, what we, you know, 
Um, it, what, by a satellite or something? Or no, what? just by your internet connection. And, and some of the fun that we have sitting in my shop sometimes is we actually line up the different home devices and actually ask some questions and see who's quickest to yeah. come back with an answer. And it, and it does vary from time to time on different ones. How secure is that if I give it something secret? Uh, not at all, no, no, absolutely not so at all. So never, never, never leave it on when you're having a, uh, a discussion, private discussion? I, I wouldn't leave it on if you were talking about your passwords for your computer. I wouldn't leave it on when you're talking about uh, you know, things that might be the, some little secret you've got in your business that you're about to go and explode. Or just personal stuff. Oh, personal stuff, that's right. You yeah. leave it on, on and you, you've, got a, you've got a problem you're trying to work out with a mate of yours in your lounge room. It's hearing all of that, isn't it? You're exactly right. And, and, and it's, they do say that, listen, because it's trying to learn better how humans talk and, and use all that information. But again, you really don't want that sitting there listening to you while you're talking about what might be happening, you know, your kids and what they're up to and all right. your personal lives. And all Why that. isn't there a little, a little something, a little chip or something in that uh, Math Dickerson that says that beeps after it's left on for a little while, like a fridge door when you leave it open. Yeah, they, they have it sitting there on all the time and they, they put all all the user guides and all the warnings that you read through and the terms and conditions you accept, it talks about it in all of that. Of course, no one reads that and then we find out later on that it's listening away and we're all shocked by that. But it is sitting there listening the whole time and, and essentially if you're going to have one of those in your home and you've got it plugged in, assume that someone's listening. Assume that it's on? Assume that it's on, definitely, and someone's listening. Why can't there be a little chip that beeps? Well, I think the idea on. is that it, they want it to be basically there, ready to listen. So when you do say, Alexa, turn on the lights, it immediately responds. So they're trying to make it convenient for a user, and so it needs to be on sitting there listening the whole time. What about smart TVs? Smart TVs are a different thing altogether. Smart TVs are essentially basically are saying that you've got a link from your TV to the outside world, whether it be through some apps, whether it be YouTube, whether it be some of the various... TV channels that have got uh, different apps to allow you to access it. So they're not the same. You are getting some TVs now that you can talk to, but they're not the same. But of course, you can link these things together and have you talk to a smart device. That's what I was going to say. And then get them to, yeah. to actually your TV. If, if someone wants to see a demo one day, come down to our shop. We control our TVs and our lighting with our Alexa. And basically, we can sit there and tell it to go to a different channel, turn the volume up, turn the volume down, turn on yeah. lights, all the rest of it. So finally, Matthew Dickerson, is the back uh, order of this is just remember you've got that thing there yeah. at Alexa it's on it's on and if you're going to talk private make sure it's off well that's right if you're going to have a private conversation and you don't think about it it just no, sits there in the background you don't go oh I'm going to have a private conversation now no. I'll go and turn that off well a private conversation can come out of nothing correct exactly right yeah so be be aware I suppose that it's there and also well, just somebody's listening somebody's listening that's right because they're they're all sitting there in the background there are still humans there behind the scenes in all of these devices oh on to the new breakfast. It's Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Tech Talk with Matthew Dickerson.